Welcome to Store Talk. So today with us on Stuart Talk, we have a special guest, special, special guest. This is a, a, a real grip friend, uh, grew up with her, um, seeing her growth, uh, seeing her family's growth. Her family means a lot to me because so many of them imparted to me. Um, when you speak about legacy, you speak about her family's name. Um, she's a dancer, a model, instructor, a performer, um, just, just an amazing woman that have helped. Um, develop, train, and cultivate so many young kids today. And um, people like her need to be spotlighted, need to be motivated um, to be able to just continue to keep on because um, she's humble. Like she don't do a lot of things just for the people to see it. You see her effort, you see her quality of work, winning awards or the type of shows that her teams put on. We have with us, Miss Tanisha Shellman. How you doing? Good. Hi. Thank you. <laughs> First of all, thank you so much for that introduction. That was yeah. so kind of you. <laughs> yeah. And it's, uh, it's it's real just because like I, I seen the work you and your, your family have put into this and seeing, you know, that it's consistent and it's going on and on and, and you you're helping to grow um, young kids and to help develop them to see it from a different point of view. And, and you're, you're just consistent with it. So how are you doing today? I'm doing really good. I'm doing well, enjoying the sun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So how did this uh, dance and performing and all this, how did this start in the Shellman family? Right. Okay. So for starters, my mom, she's got four kids um, and I'm her last kid. So she herself is a dancer. She, when she was younger, she used to do things at her church locally. She used to have young groups where they would minister through acting and singing and dancing um and she's always had a love for dance um but she actually had to have four kids it was not until me that she had the child that was obsessed with dance so yeah. um i got a brother who's a dj a sister who's a supermodel a sister who's a nurse um i'm very proud of my family but when i was little i knew um that i wanted to dance i just used to put my hands up in like this oval shape and i would just like twirl around um and i would just always be dancing so I can't even say I remember when or where the the desire for it started or came from, but I just know that I always wanted to dance. So my mother, right away, she was like, okay, I'm going to put you in ballet classes. So she got me into a studio called Toledo Ballet, which they're still around now. And I just started taking ballet and I was maybe about eight or nine years old. And I took ballet like two or three times a week. And I did the nutcrackers and all of that. And then one day when I was a little bit older, she had some friends from our church and she took me to a recital. And at this recital, they were doing not just ballet, they were doing hip hop and tap and jazz and stuff that I had never seen. And when I tell you, like, I was mind blown, like I was, I went home and I was, she, I wasn't even in the recital. We went to support our friends. I made her buy the DVD. So she bought the DVD. I studied the DVD. I used to tap dance and I would literally look at their feet and rewind it. And I would be like, they did this. And I would copy them. I was obsessed. And I was like, mom, you got to take me to that studio. Like I have to do all styles of dance. So lo and behold, she took me there. I ended up joining the studio, which was called Daryl Jarvis. And then I got on their competitive team and I competed all the way up through high school, left high school, graduated. I went to UC, the University of Cincinnati, my freshman year, and um, I got on their dance team. And that was like a life changer because it was um, it was hard. Everything oh. that I had went through before was hard. But this was like college level. Like, we don't care about your feelings like hard. Um, yeah. We had to run two miles before every rehearsal, which I was not a runner. So I was like, whoa, like what's happening? Didn't used to want to go to rehearsal because I was so scared of the run. I'm like two miles. So um yeah. I got through it but being on the UC Bearcat dance team like really changed my life because it gave me like that grit for for dance like it was tough I had to get through a lot um the training was hard we had to run up the bleachers in the stadium 
I about died, you know, just all <laughs> types of stuff. But it, it really, really pushed me to just have that grit for what I loved. And I think that I was going to need that throughout life. So I'm very appreciative of like that experience. Um, from there, I did that for a whole year. And then I ended up moving back home and I got on the Detroit Shock, which is in Detroit. It was their WNBA basketball team, which doesn't even exist anymore. But back then they had this co-ed dance team and it was like kids from ages eight to like 20. So at the time I, I was a freshman going into my sophomore year of college and I auditioned, I made it, which that was amazing. But I was lightly embarrassed because I was dancing alongside of like little kids as well as like teenagers. And those little kids were so talented. But at mm. the time I was just like, oh my God, they're kids. I didn't see it that way. I was proud to be on the team, but I was like, oh my God, like I'm dancing next to an eight year old. They were talented. That team, that experience taught me a lot about the public. We used to have to sign autographs, make balloon animals, all this <laughs> stuff where I was like, okay, like I'm a dancer, but I, I get, okay, I see it. Like, so being on the shock, I would see the NBA, I would see the Piston Girl dancers. And so I'm like, yeah, I want to be them. Like <laughs> literally, I'm like, I got my eyes on them. They're pretty, they're, they're women, I'm a woman. You know, I'm like, this is like, this is my goal. So immediately after that season was over, I went out and I auditioned for the Pistons dance team and um, I was fortunate enough to make it um, one of the few black women on the team at the time. And it's a, it's Detroit. So you would think it would be like 10 or 11 black dancers, but it was only like three of us, I believe. Now, if you look at the team, it is very much more well diverse. So I think that that's definitely a positive, but um, I was fortunate enough to make it and that it was like when you dream of something and you actually get to have it, it's like a feeling that I still get goosebumps when I think back to all that I was able to experience. Celebrities, every basketball player had to come and play us. So we saw them all, Shaquille O'Neal, Allen Iverson, you know, so, but we couldn't act like we were a fan. We had to kind of keep ourselves like we were a celebrity too, but it didn't feel that way because we're looking at like famous basketball players and I'm like, oh my gosh. So that experience alone, we made it to the playoffs. That was life-changing as well. And then after my full season with the Pistons, I decided to, excuse me, I decided to start a dance studio. And that was about 15 years ago. And here we are now. And yeah, what's the name of your Sultra, uh dance studio? What's the name of Touch a Dream? Touch a Dream Dance Studio. How did you come up with that name and where did that name surface from? Right. So me and my mom, it's our business together. And I remember when we start discussing actually doing it um, and we were like, well, we need a, a name for our studio. And I'm like, OK, so I can name it my name. I can, you know, I was like maybe Tanisha Shellman Studio or Shellman Studio or, you know, something related to our family. But I remember thinking, like, I really want everyone that comes to be able to have their own identity. So yeah. I didn't really want to call it like the Shellman Studio because people will graduate from my studio as they have. And I wanted them to feel like it wasn't just about me trying to make a name for myself, but giving them something that they felt like they could really attach themselves to. And because it was a dream of ours, I felt like I was touching a dream. So that's really where the name came from. I love it. Have you ever um, taught some people, kid who went through with you and you now you're teaching their sons or daughters? Has that ever oh, happened? Yes. And now <laughs> you are showing my age. <laughs> yes, I actually have. Um, I know at least two students right now that I taught their mothers like I was their mother's teacher. And I'm like, good God. And now they have daughters. And one of their daughters, her name is Phoenix. Her mom's name is Deborah Rayford. She was a company dancer of mine years ago. And now her daughter, her daughter is is so talented. She's a little fireball. She's in company. This is like her third or fourth year in company. And then um, another girl, Tiffany, her little daughter, Aria, dances with us. So, yeah. How do you um, balance your responsibilities as a dance instructor running a dance team, multiple teams? What strategies you use to manage the time to make sure it's effective for all of them to get the same type of um, work that they need? That's a really good question. Um, I always look at it like, well, I have a daughter now that that's 10. She dances every day. She competes. I have a four-year-old. 
she dances, she competes, but I also have two nieces that are older. They're one's a senior, one's a junior, and they compete. And then my nephews did too. And now they teach. I always look at their progress. And I say to myself, I, if, if they don't have something technique wise that I feel like they need to have, then there's something more that I need to add. So my daughters, my nieces, they don't get special one-on-one time. They don't get hours where I'm just with them. What I give them is standard to everybody. So they progress at the same rate as everyone does. So if you look at all of our dancers, you can't really say like, well, this dancer, you know, she probably gives her more time. All of our dancers that are on our senior team are just as good, all that are minis. And I really balance it by just looking at the progress of my own and making sure that I'm giving everybody what they need in an even amount. So as a dancer, the older you get, as far as our competitive teams, the more classes you take. Um, Our very lowest level, they might do like four classes, which is already a lot. They do um, ballet, tumbling, hip hop, jazz. And then if you go all the way up to our highest teams, they do three ballet classes a week, you know, one stretch class, one tumbling class. So the more, um, the older you are, the more you take, but we definitely try to balance it across the board. Yeah. I have seen on on social media, um, your nephew going over a dance or something with the kids. He still got, I'm like, man, he's still the truth at that. (laughs) Um, uh, how do you approach, uh, choreography and the performances at your studio? And does it differ from when you learned when you were at the Detroit Pistons, as far as you guys learning different things there, do your style or strategy differ from theirs? Um, yes and no. Um, a little bit just because we do all styles, ballet, tap, jazz, hip hop, contemporary. Um, and I think when I was on the team, it was mainly hip hop. And then when I was on the Pistons, it was hip hop and jazz. So we didn't really do ballet or lyrical because everything was for like crowd entertainment um but we we definitely have like a professional view of how we want our kids to be trained so the experiences that I got on the teams that I did everything was just really professional um everything was straight to the point a rule was a rule you know and you can balance that out but we pretty much we require them to wear ballet leotards for ballet um tennis shoes for hip-hop um but we encourage them to have their own style but we definitely kind of approach it the way that they would in the real world as far as like this is a professional setting this is how you need to be you know this is how you need to come you need to be prepared um choreography wise I would say that it's very much the same as what we experienced on the what I experienced on my professional teams when it comes to like hip-hop um I think my hip hop choreographers are really good. So we really try to give them like cutting edge choreography for all styles, something that's entertaining to the crowd. So how do y'all come about learning the new dances or implementing like which new dance that y'all going to go go with and even keeping up with the new trends and stuff? How do y'all implement that? Right now, that's the fun part, because I think like all of my choreographers and teachers, they all love what they do. So for anybody that owns a studio, you never want to hire somebody that isn't passionate um, because it's like having somebody who's a painter for a living, but they don't like to do it. You're not going to have those magical creations like on a whim or you had a dream about it. So I think for us choreographers, we are, I'm constantly inspired and so are they. And we take it serious. We do solos as well. And we, we had, I think 23 soloists this year from the ages four all the way up. Each of them do a solo we all work with them differently and our teachers will sit for weeks and pick out like the perfect song for that dancer based on their personality or the skills that they have. Um, and so the creative part, it's like, for me, all the hard work of owning the business, the best part is when I can just create and yeah. I will do it all day. And I hear a song and I'm like, Oh, I got another idea. And sometimes I have to say, just stick with what you have, but it's just so fun to, it's like color and pictures. So I think we all enjoy that part the most. Yeah. What um, sets your dance studio apart from others? Um, well, for starters, I try to be supportive of every city studio in the city as well as teams because I always thought about the fact that like they're doing what I'm doing. I love what I do. They must love what they do. So who would I be to try to hate on or 
tell someone, well, I'm better when they're just doing what they feel like God has called them to do. So I always try to keep that as a mindset. Um, But I feel like personally, what could set us apart from some is that we're very much Christian based. We do use secular music. We don't necessarily use Christian music. We will if we want, but we do use secular music because we live in a real world. But at the end of the day, we pray, we talk about God, we refer to him all the time. And our students, they know that. We come in on any day and if somebody is sick, we might not, we might even get in a circle and pray for them. And the, and the kids love it, whether they go to church or not, we don't ask. We just, my God comes first in my life. So we're just like, well, we're going to pray. And they all get together and they pray and absolutely love it. So we're Christian based. Um, we're versatile. Um, I want all colors, black people, white people, you know, um, and I think that that's important. Um, we try to stay professional and I think we're more competitive based. Um, other studios might not necessarily be or some may, but we definitely have a focus for competing. We are going to compete three or four times a year without fail, as well as dance for fun in the community. But um, we definitely are competition based. Yeah. Million dollar question for you. Last couple. I'm going to give you a couple, then we'll get you up out of here. Million dollar question. How did Tanisha make sure that she balances because you got kids, you got dances, you got work, you got life. How do you make sure you balance your time and give yourself um, time so you can re-energize or you can get time with God or you can fill yourself back up because you're pouring out to so many people. How do you do that? That's a very good question. It actually um, is difficult, but I think you learn. I've I've been more protective over my kids and my rest and my mom um, because she's partners with me. It, there's really no stop to the business. We people text all the time or we might get a book a show and I have to reach out to everybody. You know, it's constant, constant, constant. And then social media and cell phones make make people feel like they can just get you at any moment of the day. Um, so I've been a little bit more dogmatic and protective over the fact that like if somebody texts me and it's not a direct emergency, I'm not going to respond until I'm ready or until, you know, a good amount of time has passed because I need to read with my daughter, my four-year-old, when she talks to me, I need to make sure I'm not looking at my phone. I need to listen to her. Um, So I've been a little bit more stricter. And then sometimes that can be offensive at first because people see you and they think, oh, you're a nice person. And it's like, it's a business. So I still have to not maybe have friendly conversations every night with everyone because I'm tired. I don't necessarily have room to carry everybody's story. Um, So I've just been a little bit more stricter with that, as well as leaving certain days where we just, we never have classes on maybe Fridays or we never do Sundays unless we have to. And then my last but not least, you got to keep God first. There's no way your life can be balanced. Everybody's life is different, but if you put him first, he will balance what your life is for you. Um, And that means if I can be on Facebook for 10 minutes and I haven't prayed or read my Bible, then something's backwards. And I've been guilty of that. I can get on Facebook for 30 minutes and then pray for two minutes and be like, okay, God, I prayed. And it's like, really though? So I'm really working on giving him that time, not me doing hair and praying, but me doing nothing and giving him that alone time. And he just, he'll bless your world when you do that. He will make it all work. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I love um how do you um be able to help kids when they're um growing up they're trying to find their way they go to school so different people live certain lives to help them with their identity to help them to know who they were um gifted and uniquely made by God and to let them know that they are somebody for they can be confident in they self and they don't have to go to other outlets looking for um a person to give them motivation to give them encouragement how do you help your girls um remain settled Um, I think the most important thing that I do to try to help that is um, I celebrate them. I've got curly hair, long hair, skinny, lighter skin, fair skin, thicker girls, and we celebrate them all. And I love that because you can just see them just emote and who they are, who God made them to be. You know, as women, we A lot of the girls wear long braids sometimes, or maybe next week they don't have braids at all. And 
we celebrate that. And if they come in with long braids, it makes it difficult to do tumbling, but we <laughs> laugh about it. And I'm just like, well, that's part of the culture of what we're in. Today, you got longer hair today, you know? So we just celebrate that. And I think it helps them to feel beautiful and empowered as as they are. So. Yeah, do, do their different styles, characteristic traits, do, they, do that goes into like the different dances you might have for the individuals? Like their um their personality styles or like their yeah, yeah like their personality like you, you were describing their characteristics and you're describing their personality. So do you might like, hey, I got this dance, but it'll fit her because of her skill set or her personality. Do you do that? Oh, definitely. With with not so much group dances, with group dances, I think as a whole, they just we do we attack every style. So even if maybe we're doing a hip hop and that wasn't your favorite, we make everybody attack every style because it makes them versatile. But when we do solos, we let them decide whether they want to do like a hip hop or like a jazz. Once they pick, we go to figuring out this would work for her because she's very saucy or yeah. she got a lot of raw swag. Like, let's give her this this music. So that's definitely something that we do. Yeah. Well, we appreciate you stopping to take this time. Shout out to Mr. and Mrs. Shelman, Kia yeah. Ramon. Man, y'all used to be putting on these plays and stuff like you know how wild and all got the improv. That was y'all back in the day, like for real. Like yes. the sketching, the acting at an early age. Like y'all used to, man. When I thought about this interview, I'm thinking of all of that stuff just coming up. I remember performances. I remember talent shows, your cousins oh. and I'm into being a part of it, man. So y'all really you got, are. You got a great memory. Yeah, y'all really are pillars in the community, man. So I really appreciate that. And even though I was in Georgia, I still was sending your uh, uncle K Don work. Like people Love need that it. stuff. I'm Thank sending you. them like you know, cause cause y'all family, like y'all do a lot. So you absolutely. Know. Yeah, we we go way back. Like I all that's why when you reached out to me, I was like, oh no doubt. Like I don't care what's going on, we gonna make something happen. So. Because we hey we celebrated you when you was at the pictures, our pistons. I remember your picture in the blade all over. It's like, yeah, you made it, you know. So we really Thank appreciate you. keep doing your thing. Tell everybody Thank how they you. Can your dance studio. You say say that one more time, it cut out a little bit. Oh, tell everybody how they can follow you and your dance studio. All right, we got an Instagram page and it's just touch a dream. You can find us there. We got a Facebook page where it's just the fan page, but then we got a normal Facebook page so that you can actually comment and talk to us. You can inbox me. You can text me. Our website is under construction. It's easy to find us. If you plug in Touch a Dream, you're going to find us. You can message me at any time and I will message you right back. So, yeah. Thank you. It's been great. Thank you. It's been great. Talk to you soon. Yeah.